In order to find the area for any shape on the GED, the main thing you need is to know what shape it is. Because then we could look up on the formula sheet. So that first one, just a regular old rectangle. We look that up. We find this guy. The area is just the length times the width. So we're just going to multiply the two sides. And it doesn't matter the order we do it, because 8 times 4, same thing as 4 times 8. But either way, we're going to end up getting 32. So that's the area for that rectangle. Now what shape do we have in the middle there? One of my students used to say, it looks like a drunken rectangle. I agree. It's kind of slouched. We've got this side is parallel to this side. They're like train tracks. Same with the bottom and the top. Those are parallel. Therefore, this is a parallelogram. To find the area, we're going to multiply the base, 5, times the height, 7.5. That's going to end up giving us 37.5. Now, why did we use 7.5 instead of 9? Why was that the height, in other words? Well, if you're finding somebody's height, what's the first thing you have them do? Stand against a wall, right? So which of these is a better wall? Well, hopefully 7.5, because it looks like 9 barely survived an earthquake. So when you're finding a height, you always want the one that's straight up and down from the bottom. So there we go. And then that last one there. Anything with three sides is our triangle. This one looks a little intimidating because of the one half, but we're just going to multiply that times the base, 12, times the height, 5. But lucky for us, we're going to use the calculator. So we'll start with the fraction, 1 down 2, right, times the base, 12, times the height, 5. And that's it. That'll give us 30, so the area of that triangle, 30. These aren't too bad, you just have to know what all the letters stand for. Now, why did this one have a one-half? It's kind of interesting. Any triangle is exactly half the area of a rectangle. So when you multiply base times height, that's like length times width. It'll give us that whole thing. But then for the triangle, we want exactly half of that. And that'll give us just that half or that triangle. So that one's pretty cool there. If we want the largest area, we could see that one's going to be 37.5, so we're good. But what does area even represent? Let's look at one more shape. If you find the area of a rectangle, you could find the area of a square. Same thing, just multiply the two sides, 3 times 3, 9. But that represents how many little squares fit perfectly inside there. So area is always how many little squares fit inside of a shape. If you're at a business meeting and you're pretty bored, you could just count the ceiling tiles, and that is exactly the area of that room. So always counting it up using those. Let's look at another shape here. Now, what shape do you think this guy is? If you were thinking trapezoid, that's it. And the way you could remember it, it looks like the thing the elephant stands on at the circus. Except ours is sideways, so we'll kind of flip it around like that. Then, if you're at the circus, they probably have a trapeze artist. Therefore, trapezoid. It's a bit of a stretch, but that's how I remember that one. So let's grab the trapezoid formula. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and rewrite this thing, redraw it, to look like the one that we have in the picture. Because if we want h, the height, that's just the dotted line right there. And that's actually just 4.6, so let's label that. b1, that's the same thing as the whole bottom, or the base. That one, 8. b2, that's the base, but that's the base on the top, so that one, 3. And those are the only values we need to plug in here, so we're all set. Okay, let's clear. We'll start off with our 1 half times our height, 
Then we're gonna use a parenthesis. So we'll hit that guy. Our B1 was the bottom, eight, plus B2, the top, three. Okay, drum roll, we get 25.3. Same thing as B there. So if it's sideways, flip it and you'll be good. You may be asked for the area of a circle. And we just bought a sprinkler. It sprays 12 feet in every direction. Therefore, what is the area of grass that's going to be watered by that thing? We're interested in the inside of the circle. Therefore, the area. From there, R represents the radius. The radius is always from the center of a circle to the outside. So we're just going to change R to 12. Okay, let's do it. The pi is on the left side there, times our radius, 12. And that guy has a little two, that's that x squared button there. Enter, 144 pi. You might be tempted to choose A, but that one doesn't have a pi. So using the button above enter, it's gonna multiply that out. Same thing as 452.4. So D is our final area for that shape. You're putting in some shag carpet in your rectangular living room, why not, which has an area of 224 square feet. Now let's pause there, let's go ahead and draw this out. The area is 224, let's put that in the middle. Okay. If the width of the room is 14, let's put that on the right side. What is the length? We'll call it the bottom. We know that the length times the width will give us the whole area. But notice, they give us options for what that bottom part might be. So we could use their answers, plug them in, see if it gives us 224. Okay, let's clear. Let's try 12 times 14. Okay, 168, so no good, but that's all right. We'll go ahead and try 16. That's the length, 14's the width, we'll multiply those. Let's see what that gets us. Bingo, 224, the length has to be 16. Now you may be wondering, is there a way to do this without the multiple choice? Definitely. You could always start if you know the area with that, but you're gonna work the problem backwards. We multiplied to get our answer. So in this case, if you know the area, divide. Divide by the width, that'll give us the length, 16 that way. So you got options, whichever one you prefer there. And one last one. We're already sick of the shag carpet, so we're putting in some new hardwoods. They cost $6 per square foot. What is the cost to refloor the space? Now this isn't a shape that we know, but you can split it up however you want. Let's turn it into two rectangles. From there, we're going to add the areas of these rectangles together to get the whole space. But the area of this guy, well that's just 21 times 14. That'll give us 294. The area of this one, that's going to be 8 times, well, whatever that length is. But let's highlight that. When you don't know a side or a length, find everything else that goes in the same direction. Then. Let's imagine we slide 14 up, and we slide this one up. They're going to combine perfectly to 24. So the question is, 14 plus what will give us 24? That guy has to be 10 feet. Then, 8 times 10, we get an area of that little one of 80. We're going to add these two together now. Okay, clear. 294 plus 80, 374. That's how many square feet we have, but each of those costs six bucks, so we'll multiply by six. And 2244, not cheap, but the shag just wasn't doing it for us anymore, so it's worth it. So between these, these are the main types of area problems that show up on the GED. Good luck, you got these. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.